young people and our little children have a lot to put up with and indeed have a lot to swallow including the mess that previous generations have made. But from the outset, we receive in order to live, or we don't live at all. We receive milk, food and care. Hands laid on, we receive blessing. What we give, then, is what we're prepared to receive. Humility is a prime green virtue, as well as a biblical one. That's why Jesus talks, as he does, of receiving the kingdom or or God's reign which I like to take as the way for life which God offers though which we have ample scope to reject disrupt and apparently evade there's sufficient in the teaching of Jesus of Isaiah and and the prophets to draw together poetically the word and creative intent of God and the cycles and the mechanisms of the earth and the heaven the sky and the soil in a holistic relationship with creation. Heaven and earth are creatures married in one breath as the masterpiece of God, creator and sustainer. Even light and darkness have names. And this kingdom, this reign, however else it may be legitimately understood, is rooted in lived experience. Although our own perspective may limit how much we are prepared to swallow and digest and receive and how fast, which is a constant challenge for me. Have I myself taken in the damage which is already done? Now, a newborn baby, though extremely vulnerable, can upend the life of a family or community. Their loud cry demands attention and feeding, and it judges neglect, though taking things as they come, oblivious of the cost and commitment behind the scenes. A well-fed, contented baby, and I know from experience that that isn't always the case, neither knows nor cares about what ensured their safety and contentment. So it is as wise and wonderful to pray in gratitude for everything we neither see nor put a name to, as well as those creatures and situations which have particularly provoked our attention. Prayers of gratitude sometimes involve lists, though must need sacrifice any aspiration to comprehensiveness. There's more than we ever manage to give thanks for. But doing nothing because you can't do everything is either a form of despair or it's as pointlessly arrogant as trying to make out you, you can do everything, that you can control everything, sit on a clifftop, and just step out. It's dishonest to claim you can stop the climate crisis, but wise and good and pious to join the response in whatever way is given to you, as many churches with holy delight are doing. And for that, as God noted, it is not good to be alone. Our movement of eco-congregation cuts across divisions which have kept churches apart for generations, but now we know we need each other. Our solidarity, our stories, our encouragement to get on with it. It's wise, too, to act both urgently and with caution when it becomes apparent that we can help in some limited way. Given your limits, what can you prayerfully do that will change you? Your attitude, your willingness to receive change, as well as cause it. It's a modern proverb that the best time to plant a tree is 10 years ago, but the next best is today. But we need to appreciate the importance of the right tree in the right place. Or indeed the right sort of sustainable power in the right place, which may not always be the wonderful wetlands where you think nobody lives. Monoculture trees planted with the sole purpose of rapid timber or firewood production may either help or hinder the environment. Our cherished wetlands in Scotland, wonderful carbon sinks and habitats become carbon positive when they are drained or when they're planted with trees. Trees also work on a different time scale from our own brief lives. You cannot magic a carbon sink into existence by throwing money at a tree planting uh, initiative. But but if you have money, please do so. Uh, We do that. And although the readings in the lectionary this week were obviously assembled with an agenda of teaching on marriage, we receive by prayerful reading far more than that. It is not good for Adam, that name meaning soil, that God gifted to first humanity, it's not good for Adam to be alone. 
even if the outcome of the story is human community, the mystical process of naming brings on stream a diversity of opinion and conversation with fellow creatures, such as cannot be set aside. Classification of all the wonders we see helps us find our place in creation, but giving a name is a start of relationship. That distinction is useful, but not absolute. The tree of life in the book of Revelation is emphatically named and classified and diverse. The tree is all the trees that line the streets of that city of God. The fruit is whatever is seasonal and local. The tree is all the trees that line the streets of that city of God and the fruit is whatever is seasonal and local. I worked on Iona this summer at the Wildlife Week in which with little effort, not a day passed without my encountering species native to Scotland of which I'd never before been aware. And the joy and wonder I saw as people identified and named birds and bugs and sometimes tiny flowers that we've been surrounded by all our lives, that was humbling and hugely encouraging. In naming, we learn to love. And maybe that's where that image and likeness comes in, the giving of names, the start of relationship. Maybe that's the difference between naming and noting. What you have named, you will not disregard. A child without a name is a child neglected, maybe wounded, and certainly very vulnerable. A name is a fundamental tool of relationship. But to be named less is to be disposable. And that's why I insist on addressing creation as who rather than it. And I ask myself, how has it taken until my mid-50s before I made the acquaintance of Brother Stonechat? What is on offer in this way of God for all life that I am turning away from in ignorance and pride? What do I need to name in order to activate my love and respect? And what beloved relatives have I haughtily cut off until now. Can I receive earth as a beloved family member and not just a description of a thing? Jesus' kingdom stories value the significance of each thread in, in life's web, like the microscopic yeast in the huge lump of dough, like the tiny seed which provides habitat for those birds which make the sky heaven. Whatever we know, there is more to know. Whatever we name, there is more to be named. And in that sense, the Genesis story continues to this day, even as the extinction of species has accelerated due to loss of habitat and climate disruption. Barely a day passes without a species new to human knowledge coming to light. Faith recognises that God's thoughts go beyond our thoughts, that everything God has made is interdependent and connected in a way that humanity has barely begun to discover. It's a kingdom against which we've spent the last couple of centuries in open rebellion. Rather long ago, St. Augustine mithered about stories his mother had told him, about him grumpily refusing a feed as an infant. And without getting tied up in whether a baby can be guilty of anything, the principle is rather similar. How can we receive what we need for life when we refuse to take notice? A name will make a difference. Like the call of a particular gannet chick on Bass Rock, our own name makes us sit up and take notice. In life we make a name for ourselves, a good name or a bad name. And we receive nicknames which help others locate us in their experience. I worked once, I used to work in Wales where jobs get added into the names. Jones the oil, Jones the music, Jones the bones. With my late wife I named our children to express love and hope for them. And so we chose beautiful Welsh names that we had come to love for the stories that went with them. Taliesin, the boy who sang before he could talk, and that turned out to be the case. Melangeth, honey angel, who, who ran away from forced marriage to build a healing community in the Berwyn Mountains where hospitality for wild animals was key. My wife chose her own name to reclaim her life following a harrowing history of abuse. 
Is it time that we all reclaimed our common surname, the surname of Adam, the soil, that we received anew our vital participation in the web of life? If we give names, let it be names that are who names, not just what names. Way back, Moses received God by name. Yahweh God is called, I am who I will be, or who I choose to be. It's a name so holy that many people still hesitate to use it, and imperialist English speakers leapt at the chance instead to use Lord. From the 16th century, though, whatever else, good or bad, the Reformation brought, ordinary people again learnt to sing love songs to God, to reach out with hearts in partnership with their heads. And because Christians value prayer, that small offering to God to do with what God wills, then none of our small actions, our initiatives, our light bulb changings, our insulations, meadow lawns, our, our cuttings down on plastic, none of those things are without value or spiritual significance. In these things, we express faith. As work and worship were drawn together in the beginnings of the Iona community, so prayer and creation care belong together from now on. Finally, our memorials of the cost of our hatred of God, not expressed in warfare, frequently take the horrifying form of those long, long lists of far too many human names. Something seems to have gone amiss since God guided to Adam all those fellow creatures who came to be equipped with the means for relationship. To be given as we give our children the gift of the name. Mm -hmm.